happy may you guys it is a new month you already know what that means today we are heading over to barnes and noble to pick up some new reads i'm keeping this introduction short and sweet because by now you should already know the drill it is still pretty damn early it's 10 a.m i'm heading over to barnes and noble right now and then when i get back i'll do a book haul with you guys so let's head out <laughs> Just got back from the bookstore. I had to ask for one of these plastic bags instead of putting the books in my tote because on the way to Barnes & Noble, my Uber driver gave me this bag of popcorn from his family business and it took up so much space in my bag. I also had a water bottle in there. And as you guys will see, I went a little overboard today with the books. They did not fit inside my tote bag. But also, how random is this whole popcorn situation? I can't believe my Uber driver just gave me a bag of popcorn i mean i probably won't eat it because i don't trust like anyone <laughs> you just never know nowadays what people's intentions are but i just thought it was funny because there's literally never a dual moment with florida uber drivers never before i show you guys all the books that i picked up i'm actually going to make some coffee because i'm in need of a little caffeine pick me up and then we'll sit down drink some coffee and i'll go over all the books i picked up some really good ones i'm super excited about Got my little cup of coffee also how cute is this little mug it has love right on the corner all right let me drink my coffee before i spill it all I went a little overboard during this little bookstore trip. I normally get about five books. Today, I got seven. I felt like I was in Barnes & Noble forever today because they had such a great selection of books this week and I literally wanted all of them, but I decided to just pace myself and I narrowed it down to seven books, which I think are some really good books and I'm super excited about all of these. But the first book that I picked up is called The Silent Patient. I've actually watched by this book a couple times during my previous bookstore trips and I just kept gravitating towards this book so today I decided to finally pick it up and I'm really excited to start reading it. Alicia's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband Gabriel returns home late from work and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's re 
refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into a mystery that captures the public imagination. And she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids at The Grove, a secure psychiatric unit in North London. Criminal psychotherapist Theo Faber is captivated by Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband will take him down a path more unexpected and more terrifying than he ever imagined. Doesn't that sound amazing? I feel like this is going to have me at the edge of my seat and I already know that a massive twist is going to be involved in this book. The next book that I picked up was The Goal by L. Kennedy. I actually started reading the off-campus series back in March, I believe? Maybe end of February? I can't really remember when, but I am two books away from finishing the whole off-campus series. This is one of the books I have yet to read and it hasn't been at the Barnes & Noble that I normally go to, so I waited and waited and finally they had it in stock. I know I could have ordered it online, but I just like going in person. That's just me. If you haven't read the off-campus series, you should definitely read it if you're into like spicy romance books because these books are super spicy. They're also very entertaining and I always fall in love with the characters. There's like five different books in total and the characters are all within the same friend group. It's really nice because you really get to know all of the characters very well. College senior Sabrina James has her whole future planned out. Graduate from college, kick butt in law school, and land a high paying job at a cutthroat firm. Her path to escaping her shameful past certainly doesn't include a gorgeous hockey player who believes in love at first sight. One night of sizzling heat and surprising tenderness is all she's willing to give John Tucker. But sometimes one night is all it takes for your entire life to change. Tucker believes being a team player is as important as being the star. On the ice, he's fine staying out of the spotlight, but when it comes to becoming a daddy at the age of 22, he refuses to be a bench warmer. It doesn't hurt that the soon-to-be mother of his child is beautiful, whip smart, and keeps him on his toes. The problem is, Sabrina's heart is locked up tight, and the brunette is too stubborn to accept his help. If he wants a life with the woman of his dreams, he'll have to convince her that some goals can only be made with an assist. That's the thing with the off-campus series. It has a lot of hockey references, since all the male main characters are hockey players of the same college team. Again, if you haven't read the off-campus series by Al Kennedy, definitely check it out. For me, the first book in the series has honestly been the best one so far, but I still really enjoyed reading all the other books. Really excited to dive into this book, and I'm kind of sad that I'm almost done with the off-campus series. I think I have the goal and then the legacy, then I'll be done. But L. Kennedy also has another series. I think it's called Briar U. It's supposed to be really good. So once I'm done with the off-campus series, I'll definitely be starting the Briar U series. Drink some coffee before it goes cold. Moving on, the next book that I picked up was actually recommended by one of you guys during my last bookstore vlog, and it's called The Selection. It is the first book of its series, I believe. Here's a quick summary. The opportunity to be swept up in a world of glittering gowns and priceless jewels, to live in a palace and compete for the heart of gorgeous Prince Maxim. But for America's singer, being selected is a nightmare. It means turning her back on her secret love with Aspen, who is a cast below her and leaving her home to enter a fierce competition for a crown she doesn't want. Then America meets Prince Maxon. Gradually, she begins to realize that the life she's always dreamed of may not compare to a future she never imagined. Honestly, this sounds really good. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have read this series and let me know if I should expect good things. I were really surprised about this one. If you watched my last reading vlog, which was on A Court of Thorns and Roses, then you would know that I fell in love with that book. So of course I had to pick up the second book in the series. This one is called A Court of Mist and Fury. You guys have told me that I am going to be in for a roller coaster with this book. I don't think I'm ready, but I am excited. So there's that. A quick background. Feyre has undergone more trials than one human woman can carry in her heart. Though she's now been granted the powers and lifespan of the High Fae, she is haunted by her time under the mountain and the terrible deeds she performed to save the lives of Tamlin and his people. As her marriage to Tamlin approaches, Pharaoh's hollowness and nightmares consume her. She finds herself split into two different people, one who upholds her bargain with Reese. I forget how you pronounce it, so I'm just going to abbreviate his name. Reese, which I cannot stand. High Lord of the Feared Night Court, and one who lives out her life in the Spring Court with Tamlin. 
Hamlet. While Feyre navigates a dark web of politics, passion, and dazzling power, a greater evil looms. She might just be the key to stopping it, but only if she can harness her gifts, heal her fractured soul, and decide how she wishes to shape her future, and the future of a world in turmoil. Guys, <laughs> I'm a little scared to start reading this, but I am really excited because people keep telling me that the second book is way better than the first book, and I love the first book, so I can't even imagine loving the second book even more. <laughs> I will be reading it with you guys, so definitely expect a reading vlog coming very soon featuring this book. Next up, we have One of Us is Next. Last month, I fell in love with One of Us is Lying. I gave that book a 4 out of 5 stars. Of course, I had to pick up the second book in the series. This one follows three characters after the first book ends. I'm going to skip the first paragraph of this book summary because it contains huge spoilers. And if you haven't read One of Us is Lying, I don't want to spoil that book for you because I think everyone should read it, especially if you're into these type of murder mystery books. It goes, a ton of copycat gossip apps have popped up since Simon died. This time it's not an app, it's a game, truth or dare. Phoebe is the first target. If you choose not to play, it's a truth, and hers is dark. Then comes Maeve, and she should know better, always choose the dare. By the time Knox is about to be tagged, things have gotten dangerous. The dares have become deadly, and if Maeve learned anything from Bronwyn last year, is that you can't count on the police for help or protection. Simon's gone, but someone's determined to keep his legacy at Bayview High alive, and this time there's a whole new set of rules. And I'm really excited to start this one. I only picked up a one Colleen Hoover book during this bookstore trip because I didn't really like the selection that they had if I'm being honest. The books just didn't seem appealing to me. I'll read them eventually but there were so many other books that I wanted to pick up from different authors that I just decided to put off picking up any more Colleen Hoover books except for one. Reminders of him. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. I mean, Colleen Hoover, I already know this book is going to tug at my heart like there's no tomorrow. And I've heard so many good things about this book, so I'm definitely going to be reading this one very soon. It's probably going to be the first one that I read, if I'm being honest. And finally, I picked up The Spanish Love Deception. Catalina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially since her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiraled out of control. Now, every Everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet him. She has only four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic and aid in her deception. New York to Spain is no short flight, and her family won't be easy to fool. Enter Erin Blackford, her tall, handsome, condescending colleague who surprisingly offers to step in. She rather refuse, never has there been a more aggravating, blood boiling, and insufferable man. Girl, tell me how you really feel. But Catalina is desperate, and as the wedding draws nearer, Erin looks like her best option. And she begins to realize he might not be as terrible in the real world as he is at the office. I feel like this is going to be such a cute read. I was sucker for books that involve two main characters that hate each other and then they end up falling in love. I guess I'm such a girl when it comes to romance books like that. For example, I absolutely love the book The Unhoneymooners and it seems like The Unhoneymooners and this one are very similar in the fact that both main characters kind of hate each other but once they get to know each other they fall for one another. I've heard so many great things about this book. I can't wait to, to start reading it. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of the books that I picked up today during my bookstore trip. I would love to hear you guys' opinions. Also don't forget to leave any book recommendations that you may have. I would love to pick them up next time I go to Barnes and Nobles but that is pretty much it for this bookstore vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you a part of my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!